What's up everybody, it's Jarvis from Strong Dragon Training and today on the Strong Dragon Files, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about intermittent fasting. Now, it's something that pretty much everybody has heard about. I would say 90% of the people that I deal with know exactly what intermittent fasting is, uh, know the idea of it, yet most of them still do it wrong. And I bet you ask yourself, well, how can somebody do something wrong when it just involves not eating. Well, they not eat for too long is one of the problems. But before we get to that, let's break things down just a little bit for the people that have not heard yet about intermittent fasting. So what is it? It is designed, most people think it is designed when you try, for people trying to lose weight. Now, while that is true, and yes, it is mainly used for people trying to get their weight under control, it can be used for pretty much anybody trying to cleanse their body, trying to reset their body, and trying to get their body to go through a regenerative phase and to burn maybe a little bit more of unwanted fat. So what you do essentially during intermittent fasting is from a specific time, the evening, of a day, uh, let's say 8 p.m., you stop eating. You have your last meal and you're done with anything solid. So no more food, nothing that is solid will go in your mouth. Uh, you obviously, you go to bed, you have your six, seven, eight hours of sleep, but after that, you wake up and you only have water. For how long, you ask? Well, most uh, studies recommend that you start easy with eight hours. Then you build yourself to nine, 10, 11, 12, etc., all the way up to 16 hours. Now, notice what I say here is that most studies, and I'm going to uh, put in a couple of studies on intermittent fasting right below this video. Uh, most studies say that you go beyond the 16 hour mark of fasting and your body is going to start getting into that starvation mode. Now, of course, everybody's different, every body is different, and some bodies can take a little bit more than others, which is completely fine, but what I am recommending and what I'm telling all of my clients is, do not fast more than 16 hours, you don't need to. So how the body reacts to all of this is essentially, after the 10 hour mark is what most studies say, is the body enters a more regenerative phase. So your, cell, your cells rather start regenerating and um, the body now starts processing away. Cause you gotta remember if you have no more uh, carbs or glucose in your liver for the uh, body to start eating away at, you know, that empties out it will eventually start eating at the fat reserves. And that is the whole point of the intermittent fasting. You don't give your body any more glucose in order to store it or use it for energy. Now, again, this one may sound to some people like keto. Well, there's a couple of benefits for this type of diet as opposed to keto. So one of the things is because you stay with just pure water and maybe, maybe black coffee in the morning, for example, when you wake up, you don't put milk, you don't put sugar, you don't put nothing in it. If you can't have it black, then you don't have it. You just stick with water. You can also have tea, but again, it has to be without milk, without sugar, without anything in it. So with the water, uh, most studies show that the body, the cells of the body will regenerate slowly. And if you do this type of intermittent fasting for a longer period of time, there is a lot of health benefits that uh, they say uh, your, uh, even your skin cells will start regenerating, you start you know, looking better, collagen gets built, etc., etc., etc. Now, it's all based on which study you follow and how your body per se reacts to it. Thing is, what is for sure is that because of the high amount of time that you don't give your body glucose in order to burn it for energy, you will go into burning fat for energy. So doing that is great. Now you've got to also remember that once you are done with the 16 hour of intermittent fasting or 10 hours or 8 hours or whatever your body is capable of handling, you can't just go and dive into the fattiest, slimiest, biggest possible meal that you've ever had in your entire life. You gotta be careful with that, right? You gotta get your body back into 
a slower pace. You gotta give it some light food to have, uh, even if you go from a, a soup point of view or something very, very light. Uh, water, of course, is recommended, as I mentioned, to be drunk throughout the uh, intermittent fasting process when you're awake, of course, and uh, take it from there. Now, some people have also said that they find benefit out of uh, taking the intermittent fasting for five or six days a week and then having a 24-hour fast on the seventh day or depending on how many days they do. Personally, I will say that for me, even the intermittent fasting for 16 hours is very difficult. I've uh, tuned and toned my body into having smaller meals throughout the day so I can have five to six meals throughout the day. But when I wake up in the morning, I'm fine not to eat for maybe two to three hours. But after that, I get into a, such a hunger mode that I, I can't even function. So I need to have some kind of food, any kind of food really, to keep my body processing. But you also gotta remember that at the same time, right now, I am not looking for burning any kind of fat. And I know I could use the uh, regeneration of my cells as well, as some studies say, but I just cannot function. And I am sure that forcing my body to stay into this hungry mode is going to be probably a little bit more detrimental for me than it would be than the benefits of the uh, intermittent fasting. So, point of the whole thing is, going back to the beginning of the video when I said is people fast for too long. Some people get busy. Some people don't have anything in the morning and that's probably the only time that they can have food. Then they go to work and all hell breaks loose there. You can't even find two seconds to, uh, to sit down and breathe some air. And what can we talk about actually having food? So if you think you cannot have food and you're going to go maybe for the rest of the day or for 20 hours or 25 hours without food, now remember, I am talking about from the evening before you can't eat up until 16 hours after that. So if you stop eating at eight, you go till eight, you go till nine, 10, 11, 12, you cannot go too much longer than that, right? Remember, it's 12 hours. When you go up to the uh, the eight mark point, you have four more hours left after that. So by noon, you should be having something light to eat if you stop eating at 8 p.m. the night before. Now you're going into 1 p.m. and you're not eating anything. Okay, fine. Some bodies can take that. Some bodies can. I know mine won't be able to. I will be hangry as crazy. I will be nearly killing somebody because I am starving at that point, like beyond. Um, <clears throat> but if you get into the 2, 3, 4 p.m. mark, and I deal with a lot of people that say, well, if I don't eat in the morning before I leave home to work, I am not able to eat till 5 or 6 or 7 p.m. when I'm done work, then intermittent fasting is not for you. You cannot do it at that time, okay? So you cannot pick that time frame to, uh, to do your intermittent fasting because your body will enter such a starvation mode that remember, your body prefers carbohydrates, it then goes to fats, and finally, if it doesn't have the fat anymore or doesn't want to burn the fat anymore out of the reserve because it enters in this warning and uh, crazy zone, it'll go after your muscle. Your body will always prefer to keep the fat for protection and lose the muscle. It can survive without the muscle, it cannot survive without fat, right? So, do be very careful how you do your intermittent fasting. Now, then comes the question of uh, some of my clients say, well, what if I fast throughout the day? Well, you know what, to be honest with you, it is going to be a little bit more difficult because then you're not eating the entire day and then you're going to bed at night and then you're not eating at night, so when the flip are you eating? The whole idea of the intermittent fasting is you have those eight hours of sleep over there that you get where your metabolism already slows down because at night when you sleep, you have a slower metabolism, everything rests out and resets. So you're getting to those eight hours very easily of no food, no water, no nothing, the body's cleansing itself. But throughout the day, A, you have so much temptation looking everywhere and going everywhere. You probably go to the mall, you probably have some groceries to do. Are you really able to do it throughout the day? I would recommend not. So if you cannot accommodate an intermittent fasting from the evening before, when you go to bed until the day after, 
then I would say intermittent fasting is not the diet type for you. And don't worry, there are many other ways your cells will be able to regenerate and recoup and relax through other methods. We'll cover those in different videos, but the point of intermittent fasting is, is not to go too long uh, without having the food. 16 hours is what they recommend through studies to be the max. So if you go, like I said, an hour or two beyond that, everybody is different. I recommend don't go even that, but some people can get away with that. You go beyond that, you get the 20 hour mark, the 22 hour mark, and you are in starvation mode 100%. I don't care who you are. The body is not going to be able to take all that and uh, you will do more harm than good to your body. So message of today's video, guys, intermittent fasting is great. The little amount of intermittent fast that I can do because I personally cannot take even the 16 hours of intermittent fasting. And honest and truly, I won't even try to take it because if my body requires food, I am into building more and I'm trying to maintain my muscle. I'm not trying to even risk my body going into a muscle burning mode. Um, <clears throat> I will have the uh, eight hours, 10 hours, or whatever I can get out of it, but that's about it, okay? So it is a great diet. I've tried it before. It does work great. It does give me a little bit more energy throughout the day as well, I found personally. Um, and yes, it does burn uh, some of the more stubborn fat out of the body. However, you are looking at if you abuse it and you do it for too long, then you are looking at doing way more damage than good in your body. So be careful guys. And also the other message of it is you are done your intermittent fasting. You cannot go full crazy boom mode on all the crazy food out there. You still need to maintain a balanced diet throughout the day because whatever you burn during your intermittent fasting, you're gonna gain that and then some if you don't have a balanced diet, a clean diet, based on your fitness goal and what you're trying to achieve. So be careful what you do out there, guys. Make some good choices, do a little bit of research, try it out first, make sure it's right for your body. If it's not, there's tons of other diets out there, or it's just as simple as eating clean, good, balanced meals, okay? So try it out, let me know how it works for you guys, drop me some comments below, tell me if you like it, tell me if you've tried it, how it worked for you, and how many hours you guys can hold the intermittent fasting for. My name is Drives from Strong Dragon Training, and I'll catch you next time on another video of Strong Dragon Files. Stay fit, stay healthy.